ready now? Yeah, whenever we get back. Tell me when. I'd like to say good morning to the Hillington Village community. We're uh, recording in a different area uh, due to inclement weather. Uh, I just want to let it be known that uh, we will be doing the street evangelism 8 a.m. some weekends and 1 o'clock. Uh, a one o'clock p.m. some weekends due to my new work schedule, but we will be out. Um, we are here on behalf of the Lions Cross Apostolic Church. It's uh, Hueytown, Alabama, and the Pastor High Carp was the third. It's the Lions Cross Apostolic Church. Our temporary place of worship is the Brookline Community Center, twenty five zero one Brookline Drive, Hueytown, Alabama three five zero two three. When the Pastor High Carp was the third. We're going to have Deacon Leroy uh, lead in prayer. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you for today, Lord God. We thank you for your love, Lord God. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your protection today, Lord God. Lord God, I repent of sin, sins of omission, as well as sins of covid. Forgive me for each and everything that I've done, Lord God, that's unlike you. Lord God, I'm praying that your spirit pour out today, Lord God. Lord God, that you pour out your spirit among all flesh, Lord God, because we know it's your will, Lord God. We're praying that your will be done, that your name be glorified. Lord God, I'm praying, Lord God, for families, Lord God, over the community, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I'm praying, Lord God, for, for uh, togetherness, Lord God. Lord God, I'm praying that children are saved. Lord God, I'm praying that parents, Lord God, train up their children in the way they should go so when they grow old, they won't depart from it, Lord God. I'm praying for parents. I'm praying for aunts, Lord God. I'm praying for uncles, Lord God. I'm praying for grandparents, Lord God, for unity, Lord God, to train up their children, Lord God. Lord God, I'm praying, Lord God, that any broken relationships in households, Lord God, be mended, Lord God. Lord God, I'm praying, Lord God, that mothers and fathers, Lord God, band together, Lord God, in unity, Lord God. Lord God, bless their marriage, bless their union, Lord God. Lord God, that they be able to raise up their children right, Lord God, raise them up properly, Lord God. I'm praying for cousins, Lord God, and, and aunts, Lord God. Lord God, I'm praying, Lord God, that you heal, Lord God, that you guide, Lord God, that you lead, that you direct, Lord God. I'm praying for friends and neighbors, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, I'm praying, Lord God, that you pour out your spirit upon all flesh, Lord God. I'm praying, Lord God, that we live our life upright, Lord Jesus. Lord God, that people may see, Lord God, that we live upright in, uh, in front of people as well as, Lord God, behind the scenes, Lord God. Lord God, when people are looking as well as when people aren't looking, Lord God, that we be holy, Lord God, and holy in our manner of conversation. That we be upright, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, I'm praying that hearts are pricked on today, Lord God, that souls are saved, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, I'm praying that hearts come into the knowledge, Lord God, and the likeness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord God. We thank you for each and everything you do, Lord God. I'm Praying that souls are repented of their sins, Lord God. That souls are baptized in water in Jesus' name and filled full of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance, Lord God. We thank you for each and everything you do, Lord God. I'm praying that you heal broken hearts, that you mend broken hearts, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, I thank you for each and everything you do, Lord God. I'm praying that souls are saved, Lord God. I'm praying that souls are filled with your spirit, Lord God. I'm praying, Lord God, that this wicked and perverse generation, Lord God, Lord God, that we walk upright, Lord God. I'm praying, Lord God, that your people will call by your name, Lord God, will humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from uh, our wicked ways, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, I'm praying, Lord God, that hearts are repentant of sin, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, I'm praying, Lord God, for healing physically, Lord God. I'm praying for healing mentally, Lord God. I'm praying for healing financially, Lord God. I'm praying for healing spiritually. Spiritually, Lord God, Lord God, I'm praying that we put you first, that we love you, Lord God, with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, Lord God. I'm praying that we love our neighbors as we love ourselves, that we love our brothers as we love ourselves, that we love our wives. Christ love the church, Lord God. I'm praying, Lord God, that your will be done, that your name be glorified. We thank you for each and everything you're doing, Lord God. We thank you for who you are, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We bless you, Lord God. We live for no other reason but to bless your holy name on today, Lord God. We're grateful, Lord God, to stand in your presence, to bless and praise on your name, Lord God. Lord God, we understand it's only by your grace and your mercy that we're here today, Lord God. 
Lord God, I understand that there's many people who laid down last night who didn't make it this morning, Lord God. So we're thankful for another chance on this side, Lord God, to push, Lord God. Lord God, to live in holiness, Lord God, to push, Lord God, to make you happy. We want to smell good in your nostrils, Jesus. We want to look good in your eyesight, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to show a pattern of good work, Lord God. Sound behavior, Lord God. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, Lord God. I'm praying, Lord God, that you move by your spirit and your spirit alone. Oh, Lord God, pour, pour out your spirit among all flesh on today, Lord God. We thank you for each and everything you're doing. We thank you for who you are, Lord God. I'm praying, Lord God, that hearts and souls are saved on today, Lord God. I'm praying that we love our enemies that as we love ourselves, Lord God. Help us to love those who despitefully use us, Lord God. Help us to love, Lord God, because you said if we don't know love, Lord God, we don't know you. So we want to know you well, Lord God. We're praying for an increase in faith on today, Lord God, knowing that our faith is our connected to you, Lord God. We're praying for a faith that grows and grows and grows, Lord God. Move by your spirit and your spirit alone, Lord God. I'm praying for marriages all over this land, Lord God, that we be a threefold cord in you, Lord God, putting you first, Lord Jesus, Lord God, then the husband, then the wife, Lord God. Lord God, help us to follow, Lord God, your construct, Lord God. Lord God, the way you seek to do things, Lord God, your order of things, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. Lord God, we know, Lord God, if we call ourselves the head, Lord God, we must be servants, Lord God. So help the men, Lord God, of that household, Lord God, to serve their household, Lord God, to be servant leaders in the household, Lord God, to serve, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for each and everything you do. Doing the lowly task, Lord God, we thank you for each and everything you do. We thank you for who you are, Lord God. I'm praying for the school systems, Lord God. Pour out your spirit, Lord God. I'm praying, Lord God, that you, Lord God, save the children, that you save teachers, that you save the principals, Lord God, of the school systems, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, I'm praying, Lord God, that you bless the things to these children here, Lord God. I'm praying, Lord God, that you guide the teachers, Lord God. Lord God, I'm praying that you guide the principals, Lord God. I'm praying, Lord God, that you uh, use the the, um, the the adults in the schoolhouse, Lord God, to train children up in the way they should go, Lord God. I'm praying that children open up their ears and hear, Lord God, the advice and teaching of the uh, the teachers, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, I thank you for each and everything you do, Lord God. I thank you for who you are, Lord God. I'm praying for uh, peace and safety over the community, Lord God. Lord God, all the killing, Lord God, that's going on, Lord God, we rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying that souls are saved, Lord God, that we be focused on our Father's business, Lord God. Help us to keep you first, Lord God, to keep you first in each and everything we do, Lord God, to put you first, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for being God and God alone. I'm praying that you bless, Lord God, politicians and leaders, Lord God, over this community, Lord God. I'm praying that they're saved, Lord God. I'm praying that they're filled full of your spirit, Lord God. Bless the plans they have over the community, Lord God. Bless, Lord God, that thinking they have over the community, Lord God. You ultimately have the final say, so lead God and direct right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for each and everything you do. We thank you for who you are, Lord God. We thank you for being sovereign. We thank you for being king of kings and lords of lords, Lord God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord God. Lord God, you said weeping may endure for a night, but Lord God, joy come up in the morning. We thank you for joy, Lord God. We thank you for peace, Lord God. Lord God, we look towards the hill from which come up our help. Our help coming from you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you. Lord God, we bless you for all things. We magnify you for all things. I'm praying for wisdom, Lord God. I'm praying for knowledge and understanding. I'm praying for humility all over this land, Lord God. I'm praying that we don't think too highly of ourselves than we ought, Lord God. We cast down pride, Lord God, and arrogance, Lord God. Lord God, each and every thought that exalts itself against the name of Jesus Christ, we cast it down to the pits of hell right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord God, I'm praying, Lord God, for reconciliation, Lord God. I'm praying that hearts, Lord God, Lord God, that, um, that people, Lord God, reconcile, Lord God, reconcile to you, Lord God, that we reconcile to one another, Lord God, that we love one another, Lord God. I'm praying for restoration, Lord God, that you heal, that you deliver, Lord God, that you guide, Lord God. I'm praying that you move by your spirit and your spirit alone. I thank you for each and everything you do. I thank you for who you are, Lord God. Lord God, I'm praying for love all over this land, Lord God. I'm praying for joy all over this land, Lord God. I'm praying for peace in the midst of stormy situations all over this land, Lord God. I'm praying for meekness all over this land, Lord God. Lord God, that we be sincere, Lord God, and honest, Lord God. I'm praying for gentleness, Lord God. We know a soft answer, Lord God. Turn them down anger, Lord God. So help us to be gentle with one another with our words, Lord God. Help us to love one another as we love ourselves. Help us to treat one another as we want to be treated. 
treated. Lord God, I'm praying for goodness, Lord God. You're good, so Lord God, help us to be good, Lord God. Help us to walk in the light, Lord God. Be a light into a uh, lamp into our feet and a light into our path, Lord God. Help us to walk upright, Lord God. I'm praying for temperance, Lord God. Help us to be self-controlled, not giving, Lord God, anything too much power over us but you, Lord God. You're the ultimate ruler, Lord God. Help us to have control over our behavior, Lord God, over the things we hear, Lord God, over our thinking process, Lord God. Help us to be led by you in each and everything we do, Lord God. I'm praying for long suffering. I'm praying, Lord God, that we be patient, Lord God. You're patient, so help us to be patient. Lord God, we thank you for each and everything we do, uh, you do, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your spirit today, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, I'm praying that you pour out your spirit among our flesh, Lord God. I'm praying for an increase in faith on today, Lord God, that we be hearers of the word, Lord God. Lord God, you say, he who have uh, ears, let him hear. Lord God, and after we hear the word of God, Lord God, help us to apply it to our lives. Help us not to be only hearers of the word of God, but doers of the word of God as well. Lord God, we thank you for each and everything you do, Lord God. We thank you for who you are, Lord God. Lord God, we bless you because you're great and you're greatly to be praised. Lord God, I'm praying, Lord God, that we have godly integrity, that we follow after righteousness, that we do things with the spirit of excellence. Oh, Lord God, I thank you. Lord God, I bless you for all things. I magnify you for all things. And that's in the Jesus mighty name that I do pray. Amen. 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 Also, thank you, Jesus. Um, I just want to thank Jesus today. Um, and I want to introduce the speaker. Uh, I'm happy to introduce her. Uh, a mighty woman of God, prudent woman, caring woman, righteous woman, upright woman, uh, the wife to one husband. <laughs> and I thank God for that. Uh, the speaker of the of this time period is Amina Shackelford, my wife. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. I am here today due to inclement weather. We usually come out and evangelize the Ellington community. I want to thank the Lord first, who is the head of my life. I want to thank my pastor, High Paul Brooks III, for allowing me this opportunity to speak to, that, to you all today. Um, and I think you want to open up in prayer. So today, the title of this message is called, Lord, Help My Unbelief. My scripture will be coming from Mark, the ninth chapter, the 17th through the 29th verse. And I'll read that into your hearing now. The 17th verse reads, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth, and pinneth away. And I spake to thy disciple that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he, when he saw him, Straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And all times it have cast him into fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If Thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him, lifted him up, and he arose. And he, when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, 
This kind can only come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Lord, help my unbelief. So what is unbelief? Unbelief by Google definition is lack of religious belief or an absence of faith. Many times in my life, I have been in this category of unbelief. I have not always been the fastest. I have not always been the smartest. I have not always been the prettiest. I have not always been the best of anything. Quite frankly, before I received the Holy Ghost, I was what many would call a loser. But Lord, the Lord my God, gave me strength. And after the Holy Ghost came upon me, I became a winner. I was someone who was severely bullied. I was someone who had book teeth. Someone who was not easy on the eyes as many would like to speak. But my problem was this caused me a great deal of pain. This caused me pain because I was looking towards man and not towards God. My problem was that I didn't know that there was an adversary seeking to delay, hinder, and hinder my progress. So let's talk about what an adversary is. I said this word adversary. The adversary, by definition, is someone or something that struggles with, opposes, or resists an enemy, an opponent. Our adversary, so that we all know, is Satan, sin, our own flesh, and this world. I want to take you to Nehemiah, the fourth chapter of the 11th verse, and it reads, And our adversary said, They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them, and slay them, and cause the work to cease. Understand that our adversaries desire to hinder our blessings, but we must rebuke the enemy and cause his work to cease. Don't you know that the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper? Don't you know that God gave you power? After the Holy Ghost comes upon you, we receive power. I know because I'm standing here in front of you today because of the power that the Lord has given I could not see long ago who God was molding me to be. I could not see where he was going to take me. So I asked, Lord, help my unbelief. Even now before you and I encourage you all to do the same. Because oftentimes we cannot see where the Lord desires to take us. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Our ways are not his ways. Our minds are battlefields. Understand, your mind is a battlefield. What is a battlefield? A battlefield is a piece of ground on which a battle is fought or a place or situation of strife or conflict. The book of Psalms, the ninth chapter, we'll look at the ninth and the tenth verse. I'll read it until you're hearing. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put thy trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him today. I am here to tell you that thou will keep you in perfect peace, all those who my, whose minds stay on him, trust in him. He reminds us that if we keep our mind on him, we'll find peace. Peace that passes all understanding. Jesus, help us keep our minds fixed on you. So what are some things that can make our minds battlefields? Doubts, lies, insecurities, fears, discouragement. But we must look at what Jesus told us in Mark, the ninth chapter, the 20th verse. And it reads, and they that brought him unto him, and when he saw him straight away, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. There are some things in our lives that do not desire for us to be free from them. There were some things in my life that did not desire for me to be free, but God, but God, and I'm here to tell you, do not let 
that fear, the discouragement, the lies stop you from moving forward. Do not allow it to stop you from trusting who God said he is, who you know him to be in your life. Even though sometimes it can seem like everything you touch fails. Like I said, at one point in time in my life, I was a loser. Everything I touch failed. I thought something was wrong. Every time I got close, something went wrong. And it did. Why? Because I didn't have his spirit. I was operating in power of self. I was losing the battle in my mind, telling myself, you can do this. You got this. The Bible says, lean not to thy own understanding. I was leaning to my own understanding. I was trying to use my carnal ideas for spiritual issues. It would not work. It's not going to work for you. It's not going to work for you. In the 21st chapter, Jesus says, 21st verse, I'm sorry. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came onto him? And he said, of a child. For many of us, our battles begin when we are yet children, when we have had family members who were hurt, family members that had their own issues, isms, and schisms that spoke or planted a seed of death in your life. But I'm here to tell you today, we must forgive. We must forgive so that we can go higher in Jesus. He desires for us to go higher. This is one of the ways we can win the battle. If we give our mind, our hope, our thoughts, our cares over to Jesus because he cares for you. Do not forget he cares for you. He loves you. He desires for you to come on to him. If you're not there, you better get there. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Until we begin to speak to that thing, until we begin to speak to the impossible thing, the way Jesus has taught us to, we will lose the battle. We can't think about, oh, I've been let down before. That can't be our thoughts. We got to set our minds on things that are above and not things that are below. Because any thinking of doubt and fear and, and depression, anxiety, all those things come straight from the enemy. Remember, he is our adversary. He is there to hinder. He is there to delay. Notice I didn't say stop because he cannot stop or block a blessing. Understand it today. Understand that he can even disguise himself as your own thoughts. So what do I mean by that? Let's make it simple. If you have thoughts that randomly come up on you, negativity, they're not your thoughts. Rebuke the enemy and he will flee from you. Resist the devil. Understand that Jesus has not left us without help or a way out or a way through. That 23rd verse reads, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth. He's telling you, believe. He's not asking much of us. How? How can I fight this battle? Our minds are battlefields, but how can I fight this battle? One, stand in truth. Stand in truth. Stand in truth even when it's hard because the enemy loves for us to cower. The enemy loves for us not to acknowledge the power that our Lord God has given us. Praise God in the middle of whatever situation that you are going through. There is power in your praise. Stay in his word because his word is true and he is his word. Keep praying. Pray without ceasing because it's power. You want to see a move of God? Pray and ask at the mouth and be moved. Seek godly counsel. Don't go to your friend, your best friend, the one you know that's going to talk you into doing something crazy. Don't go to your best friend. Seek good godly counsel. And last of all, remember the name of Jesus because there is power in the name of Jesus. You can call on him in your time of need, in your time of help, in those battles in our mind. That is your time where you need his help because we cannot, we are his children and he loves us. Understand it today. Believe his word today. 
Change your mind about the battle. Change your mind about the situation that seems impossible. We're almost done here, y'all. And straight away, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou unbelief. Why did I read that to you? We got to have humility. We have to be humble. We have to ask God for what we need. He knows our very thoughts, but it's powerful when you speak to your father about what it is that you need. You are not an island. He didn't create you to be alone. If you need help, he will give it to you today. He will help you. He just needs you to trust. He just needs you to give it to him. Know that Satan is a deceiver. He desires to win the battle over your mind because the world says, like, says it like this. When you have the mind, you have the body. And he desires to have the whole you. Don't forget it today. Understand that he desires to have your soul. But he cannot have it. I rebuke it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. It will not be so. Do not lose the battle in your mind because you refuse to open up your mouth and ask your Father in heaven for what it is that you need. Father, I need help today. Father, I'm losing this battle in my mind, but I know that I was once a loser, but you will make me a winner, Jesus. I need you, Father. I know I'm not all the way there, Father God, but I need something specific from you. Sometimes, Father God, I don't even know what it is that I need, but I know that you know what is best for me, and I'm asking that you come in, Father God. I'm calling on your name. I'm saying, Jesus, 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 so that this battle can be won. I'm resisting the devil so that he can flee from me. I'm I'm proclaiming right now in the mighty name of Jesus that it's done because your promise, your promise lets me know that this is true. Your promises let me know that you care for me. My promises that were bestowed upon me, the covenant that you made with man, let me not forget who you are, Father God. So I want you to consider this. What if God chose you despite every flaw that you have? We know what our flaws are, even the ones that are not readily visible to everybody. We know what our flaws are. But let's look at the Bible. Let's look at some people in the Bible, if you don't believe me. Abraham was old. Joseph was rejected. Gideon was a fearful man. Job lost everything. Jeremiah was young. Esther was an orphan. Moses had speech problems. Roab was a prostitute. Martha was a word war. Peter denied Jesus and Amina has trust issues. My God for glory. I thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. But that 27 verse reads, but Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. There is power in the name of Jesus. Those things, those issues, those schisms that are meant, Lord God, to bury you, will not bury you anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. He has the power to raise you up. He has the power to make these situations new. He can do it and he will do it. Why? Because he loves you. Why? Because he loves you. That 28th verse reads, and when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? Why couldn't I do this for myself, Jesus? Why didn't I know I had this problem? Why can't I fix me? You didn't create you. Your hands are not big enough. Your hands are not big enough. You cannot carry the weight. We were not designed to carry the weight. And I, I feel as though they didn't recognize, the apostles didn't recognize the issue, much like ourselves, because they didn't fully understand the battle. They didn't fully understand the battle and how the battle was fought, where it was fought, and how it has to be won. But understand this, God has given us tools of warfare. Tools in warfare. Tools in warfare. That 29th verse reads, and he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Give Jesus your unbelief. Because the enemy lives there. He lives there. 
He knows, and demons know, the power that Jesus had. They know who he is, even if we act like we don't follow God. They know who he is. They know the power that comes through the name of Jesus. They understand the sacrifice he made on our behalf for sin that was not his own, even if we don't. Even if we don't. So, replace your unbelief with faith. How do you get that faith? Through the word. Through the word of God. Through prayer and fasting. Faith, through faith, you will be empowered to take action. What is that action? Repenting in the name of Jesus. Being baptized in the name of Jesus. And asking for the Bible, Holy Ghost. Calling on his name. It's simple. I did it. Jesus, 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 Jesus. With the intention that he will fill you full of the Bible, Holy Ghost. You need it. You cannot win the battle without Jesus. Jesus is your battle axe. Do not forget it. Do not leave him behind. You need him. You cannot win the battle without him. You can't win the battle without him. Give your life to him today if you haven't. Repent today if you have not. Be baptized in the mighty name of Jesus. And remember, God uses adversity to refine and strengthen his people. The battle is in your mind. Thank you. As up against us and judgment should be condemned. And Father, we thank you for your blessing today. We thank you for the blessing of your word. We thank you for the people that you used. Father, continue to help us to stay in your will. Be obedient to your will. Father, help us to study your word. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study and show thyself approved of work and need not be ashamed. Write it, write word of truth. And Father, help us in our daily things. I hear the scripture saying Psalm 66, 18. Uh, if you hold iniquity in your heart, God, when we hear you. Father, help us to slow down and make sound decisions. Do things decent in order. Study to be quiet. Agree to disagree and obey those that have below us. And continue to use us for your blessing. And this is in the powerful name of Jesus that we end this service. Thank you for the blessing of your word.